Well, good morning. This is Truth Seeker Atheist here, and um, <clears throat> unlike previous videos, um, I'm going to put up a, a video of a little family gathering that we had last night, the controlled chaos, and what I almost lost in, in years ago when things were not as good as they are today. And I just wanted to share a little with you the wonderful life that we have today. And this is a life that can be had by everybody if they, if they put themselves to it. Um, it takes work. It takes effort. Um, my therapist, uh, he made note of that and how much progress that I've made in my life. Uh, I've always worked. I've never been out of work. And keep my fingers crossed on that one. Um, you can never tell. I still have a little bit more to go before I can afford to retire. Actually, I'm not sure I can ever really afford to retire. I'll probably have to get rid of this place <laughs> and move to somewhere less expensive. But then I have mixed feelings because you'll see the things that I'll be missing if we do leave, if we do move. So these are actually cherished moments for us, even though this is a, sort of a normal family gathering. Um, my oldest daughter, her birthday is next week, and um, her significant other's mother's birthday was last week, and so we decided to hold a little birthday gathering, but everybody got sick last weekend, so we had it last night, sort of impromptu. And uh, my oldest daughter, she did all the cooking, and my wife, she tried to help get things done, and uh, but they didn't want to tax her much. We're at a point in our lives where they, they want to help us as much as they can. And uh, we're not up to things as well physically as we wish they could be. Um, I'm scheduled for surgery next week and uh, hopefully that'll take care of some of the problems that I've had. Um, I've been suffering uh, back problems which have kept me fairly immobile and that is a real problem for a person like me because I don't like being immobile. I like being outdoors. I like to hike. You can see the lovely rural area that we live in and I like to be on the trails. In fact, that's how we discovered the watchtower was <laughs> moving into the neighborhood was uh, because um, of the hikes that we took and one day we're driving to our favorite trail and there's this sign along the road that says Watchtower, and I just couldn't believe it. So I checked on the internet, and sure enough, Watchtower had announced that they were selling all their properties in Brooklyn and that they were moving to Warwick, which is really kind of laughable in a way because the actual town of Warwick is probably 20 to 25 miles away. It's not a close thing. It's, uh, 
it's about the fur furthest, most remote corner of Warwick Township uh, that one can actually be in, and uh, where where the the Watchtower headquarters is. It's actually um, really more attached to Tuxedo Park. I mean, to, in order to get to any other part of Warwick, you have to leave Warwick from the headquarters to to get to the town of Warwick. I mean, there are no roads that go from the, it's ironic, but there are no roads that go directly from the Warwick headquarters and watchtower to, to the town of Warwick. And no doubt the, I wish I could have been there, but you know, I live in New Jersey and I can't partake of the, uh, participate in the public meetings. And um, they, I'm sure, presented the fact that they were going to be developing this land and moving, you know, um, a thousand people, 1,500 people into this location that it was going to be an economic boon for the town of Warwick and and probably was the reason why Warwick gave them all these approvals. Um, they, they're not getting, <laughs> they're not getting taxes from them, property taxes. They're, they're, um, they're not a, uh, a taxable organization, so Warwick's not making anything on them in terms of property taxes. So the uh, town probably was sold a bill of goods uh, where they say, well, you know, with all these people moving into the area, uh, you know, it'll be uh, good for your shops. Now, Warwick is a high-end town. Nobody on the income level of the Jehovah's Witnesses is going to be driving 25 miles to a very out-of-the-way place. It's even further remote in um, area than, uh, than the Warwick headquarters is. And they're not going to be going into the uh, town to be buying things because it's just too darn expensive. It really is a high-end town for people. So uh, I, I guess Warwick got sold a bill of goods on that one. And uh, <laughs> they got sold the Brooklyn Bridge. Um, so anyway, I'm, I'm sure there's, if the, uh, if the, uh, Bethelites are doing any shopping, they're doing it in, uh, Suffern or in Rockland County or in Northern New Jersey in Paramus that is more easily, more readily accessible to them than, than Warwick. So it's just a shame that at the time when they were proposing for the all the permits that somebody couldn't have enlightened the town council about what the real story would be. But I guess the town figured that having the land developed and potentially bringing people into the area would be financial a financial gain i don't i guess they that was the idea and they they gave them carte blanche approval but anyway i just wanted to it's not really what i wanted to talk about but i just wanted to uh give you a little idea of the kind of life i i live today um it's not 
it's it's sort of a controlled chaos. I love my family dearly. Uh, they're a wonderful, wonderful little family, and they treat me uh, wonderfully. They treat my wife wonderfully. We're very fortunate. We're very fortunate. We could have, if we didn't work as hard as we did, we could have lost what you've seen. I mean, it, what you're about to see. It's it's just a, it's a beautiful thing, and uh, well, anyway. Um, here is a piece of uh, a, a little bit in the night life of uh, our family get togethers when we do get together. So this is a typical thing and, and you can have it uh, if you work hard, um, if you break yourself away, you can form a life. Um, I don't see any of the, the people that I formerly uh, associated with that were people I knew all my life growing up. And uh, I don't, I built an entirely new life. And, and it's a great life. <laughs> and it's a billion times better than it was when I was associated with the Bible students. So here's a little sample of how things are with our family. So um, hope you enjoy. Felix. 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 Hey, Felix. Thank <laughs> you. 
Max say <laughs> <laughs> No, it wasn't. That's all. <laughs> it's the furthest thing from the last <laughs> That's pretty, uh, pretty Here. intense. Here. Oh. <laughs> Hey, Jen, do me a favor and do Devil's Dream. Go do that for mommy.
are coming. Say, say like the British are coming. The British are coming. Tim Jarvin was 20 years old in that Star Trek. Yeah. I looked it up, yeah. He was 27 and she was 20. He's still looking like a baby. Yeah. Well, <laughs> that's it, and uh, <laughs> we 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 celebrated together. Uh, like I said, it was celebrating two birthdays, and we had a little cake. And uh, that's taboo from Watchtower's perspective. Well, what's wrong with what we just saw? Nothing. Nothing. And trust me, that there are Bible students who live that way, too. I mean, it's not standard life. I mean, uh, I'd say the majority of Bible students don't live that way, but there are a few who live that way. Um, uh, there were uh, Bible students during Russell's time who felt it was wrong to celebrate Christmas. And, you know, that's probably how the idea crept in. It wasn't prevalent. It wasn't the majority, but there were a few that, that believed that. And uh, there's still some today who uh, don't. Uh, my, I, my wife was not allowed to trick or treat on Halloween. Uh, I, uh, I know that uh, there were other families that I knew uh, in the Bible students who didn't celebrate Christmas, and uh, there were some that didn't celebrate any holidays and birthdays. So, you know, it carries through, uh, and uh, with with certain families, uh, you know, it it was like I said, it wasn't a general thing, uh, but it did happen. Um, but. Oh, I didn't see anything wrong. <laughs> I, I, to tell you the truth, uh, it made me quite happy, quite happy. That's what I live for. That's my life. That's, that's what I live for. They keep me going. If I lost that, if I lost my family, I don't know what I'd do. But... Um, I just feel so fortunate and so lucky. And uh, well, I hope you enjoyed that a little bit. Um, we aren't exactly the normal family, but what is a normal family? A family is what you build, is what you 
you know, with the, the closeness, the bonds, the love, the caring for one another. And that's what we have between us. And uh, again, we could have lost that, but we were very fortunate. We worked hard. We worked really, really hard. And we salvaged, we, we saved it before uh, external forces that we had, we thought we had no control over, um, almost destroyed our wonderful little family. But we're, we pulled out, we're a little island now. We're a little, we, we, we don't have huge social connections and, and large social life. We are our own little group, our own little niche, our own little, our family. And I, I love them with all my heart. And uh, don't let Watchtower rob that from you. Build your life. That's a life that you can have. And it's built on love, built on caring. And, uh, and hard work, hard work. No, nobody said it's going to be easy, but once you have it, you got it, and, and, and you will never lose it. So anyway, this is Truth Seeker here, and uh, I'm wishing you a happy day. So take care. Bye-bye.